the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, just to note, um, Mr. Rogers is here, Mr. Um, Johnson, Ms. Alessi, uh, Mr. Jaslow, myself, and Mr. Crace. So the only one missing tonight is uh, Mr. Ferguson. Um, and before we get to our first item, like, like um, Steve said, I want to thank um, you know, the, the staff and the residents for being patient with this. It's been you know, three months, March, April, May, we've missed. We've had some um, challenges uh, being limited office space, having people in the office. So some things might have gotten delayed, but we're getting back on schedule. It's just the, you know, getting the technology to make sure all our board members, all our staff, everyone had access to Zoom. So we're working through that. And same thing with the office. Stony Point office is very small, so you had to limit the number of people. Certain people could be in certain. So things are get, we're a little delayed, but we're getting there. Um, first item on the agenda is gonna be a public hearing for uh, Baymar, the manufactured home. Um, we're gonna keep the public hearing open, but we're gonna open it tonight. And I would just ask that, like Steve said, that you know, if we can keep the comments to three minutes and you can also, you know, submit your comments written, you know, th th that part is still open. So for the Baymar um, application, um, if we can just, before I open the public hearing, um, who, I guess, Mr. Manuel, you want to give us a quick update or whoever from the Baymar? So, uh, Ira, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and uh, I want to thank you and the board and the staff for uh, all the efforts that you've uh, put in uh, to make this meeting happen. I know that it's a challenge. I've been in other communities and it's, it's not as easy as it looks. Um, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we've ha been before you for quite some time now. We've uh, worked very, very closely with the staff. Uh, we have obtained uh, outside agency approvals and permits and uh, quite frankly, I know that you said that uh, you were thinking about keeping the public hearing open uh, beyond this evening, but we really think that this, the time has come now uh, for uh, the board to make a decision on this and to close the public hearing. Uh, the big open items that we had uh, have been resolved. Uh, we have received our DEC permit. Uh, that has been uh, transmitted to the, to the town and uh, you, you should have received them. And certainly I know that your staff has received them because we went over that at the tech review meeting er uh, earlier this month. Uh, and uh, we've also received emails uh, from Orange and Rockland Utilities indicating that they are uh, comfortable with the plan, uh, subject uh, only to, uh, first of all, they want to review the, uh, uh, the legal language of an easement that we're going to be granting them for access. That is a post-final matter. Uh, and they also want to be sure that there is sufficient vertical clearance uh, underneath their wires. My understanding, and uh, Ken DeGennaro, is, our, our project engineer, is, is, is here on the meeting. My understanding is that the uh, uh, Orange and Rockland uh, will have approximately 45 feet of vertical clearance uh, beneath their wires, uh, 45 feet from the ground beneath their wires uh, during the maximum sag. Um, as you know, uh, transmission line wires, distribution line wires, uh, when they get heated up, uh, when they get when they get used more heavily, especially during the summer months and the, uh, the air conditioning season, uh, they expand and they sag. And Orange and Rockland wants to make sure that there is sufficient clearance underneath them, so obviously they don't burn things. Uh, the maximum uh, the the maximum sag results, I understand, in a clearance of 45 feet above grade. Uh, the only thing that would be underneath, uh, under, well, first of all, nothing would be actually underneath the, the lines. Uh, but the only thing that would be within the easements uh, would be some of these manufactured homes, uh, all of which, of course, are only one story high. And so there are a maximum of perhaps 10 feet, uh, maybe 12 feet uh, with uh, the, uh, the elevation that we have to do in order to get above the base flood elevations. Uh, beyond that, you know, it's just a matter of the normal uh, post-final uh, wrap-up, post-final permits, uh, the site plan itself has barely changed in months and months and months. And uh, we, we, we 
truly believe that the time has now come and that the board should be in a position uh, to grant approval this evening. Oh, thank you, Mr. Emanuel. Um, before I go to the public, does um, any of the board, John, um, I mean, for the engineer, John, any comment now or do you wanna comment after the public hearing? John O'Rourke. Yeah, thanks, Tom. No, um, as Iris said, the, the site plan's pretty well been locked for a couple months. We're generally satisfied with all the technical issues. Um, we're just waiting for those outside of uh, approvals and reviews. Um, and he's right. The only one we haven't received a date is, is the Orange and Rockland um, approval of the easements. All right. Good. Thanks. Thanks, John. Max, any comments? Yeah, so the the applicant has, has been really working uh, through a lot of my comments and was able to incorporate a lot of the, the uh, adjustments that I've asked over the uh, review period. Um, the, the one major issue sort of that we couldn't resolve um, on a technical level was the idea that, you know, sea level will continue to rise. It's projected to continue to rise. And so um, with the changes that the applicant is incorporating, there's gonna be a great deal of, um, and the two feet of freeboard that's required under the code, there's gonna be a fair uh, degree of improvement from currently the, the condition and uh, the exposure of this area to flooding. But eventually this area, you know, in, in 30 to 40 years is, is going to be subjected to an occasional catastrophic flood uh, like it was under Sandy again. Uh, and I think it makes a lot of sense. There's, I don't know that the applicant can really do much more at this point, um, you know, given where the roads are, the elevations are, um, they, are they are maintaining access during flood conditions now. Uh, but I think it's fair at this point to somehow convey to people that are uh, going to be moving into this area that, that this is an area that's going to flood uh, during severe weather now um, and that that's going to continue. And so my suggestion really, and, and I don't think the applicant was happy with the suggestion, but my suggestion uh, for a way to address this was simply to require some signage that the roadways flood so that people uh, who are choosing to move into this area of the town uh, are fully informed that, that this is a situation they're getting themselves into. Um, and uh, like I said, I, I don't think the applicant uh, responded favorably to that suggestion. And so I think that's a, uh, an item that the planning board has to determine whether or not uh, they think it, it makes sense. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. You're welcome. Bill, do you have any comments before the public hearing? Um, yeah, um, I kind of I agree with both, you know, John, his points that um, you know, I think they're pretty much there. As far as Max with the uh, flooding, I, I don't have an issue with putting some type of sign up about flooding, but I don't I don't see the roads. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't want it to say that just a simple. Um, sign that roads are going to flood they're only going to flood on a very rare occasion at this point um you know the roads are all being for the most part being brought up to elevation nine the floodplain elevation on the fema right now is elevation seven so the roads are going to be two foot above the floodplain i mean if you did some type of sign that under severe conditions the roads might uh have uh, an issue you know i think that's something that would be more appropriate, um, in my view. Um, but other than that, you know, you know, we are replacing an existing uh, mobile home park. You know, technically, right now, if they wanted to use the same configuration that they have, they could be replacing units and um, just elevating them. So I think it's it's definitely an improvement of what we have now. So I think we have to take that also, as we discussed over the last, you know, two years, I guess, uh, take that under consideration. All right, good, thanks, thanks, Bill. Steve, any comments before the public hearing? Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, um, and it's with regard to uh, closing of the uh, 
the public hearing at this time. As you know, this is a continued uh, public hearing and that we we're con going to continue it tonight. And I did hear from uh, an attorney, Alec uh, Burstein, who uh, indicated to me he represents the interests of three people who are presently living in the park. He wanted an opportunity to address this board. However, he was not able to uh, attend this meeting tonight. And I did inform him that it was my understanding that the, the meeting was going to be held open until uh, the next meeting in July, at which time it most likely would be closed. Um, so based upon that representation to Mr. Burstein, I would respectfully request that the meeting be kept open and okay. continued until July. Continued. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Can um, I be heard on that, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Ira. Thank you. Mr. Burstein is the attorney for the Legal Aid Society. He has been involved in this project since last winter. I don't know if he's ever actually bothered to show up in front of this board, despite the fact that he's uh, you know, made claims that he wanted to, that he, had, that he, that he thinks he, he ought to. And his interest is not with respect to the, to the, uh, the site plan. His interest is with respect to the, to the tenants that are in the mobile home park that, want to, uh, that, that are still there and arranging to, uh, to, to uh, uh, get a workout or to remain or whatever resolution there might be. Uh, I'm sorry that Mr. Honan made a representation to him as, as far as uh, what's going to happen at the public hearing this evening, but the simple fact of the matter is that Mr. Burstein has had ample opportunity to address this board in the past and has not taken advantage of it. Uh, we all knew when this application was going to be heard this evening. Uh, it was noticed. Uh, anybody, uh, you know, there, there are other people who are here, we're here, uh, and we really think it's unfair uh, that this public hearing be kept open simply because Mr. Burstein can't seem to make it to a meeting. He's had the opportunity. All right, all right, I will take it into consideration. Um, any of the board members have any comments at this time? All right, um, if no one's got comments, what I'll do is um, I'll open the public hearing um, and like uh, Steve had said, you can, uh, there's an option to raise your hand. I'll recognize you. And like you said, if we can keep it, the th oh wait, Gene, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't see you. Wait, Steve, can you uh, undo Gene? Uh, Gene, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, unmute yourself, Gene. I'm going to text him. Let me just yeah. see if I can do it for him. Let me just see. I unmute it. Yeah, there? here he oh, is. Good, you Gene. got it. You're with us. I'm getting there, guys. I'm getting there. <laughs> I, like, I, just, I just want to comment that I uh, like Max's statement and Bill kind of agreed. Uh, but the bottom line is I'm always big on safety. And uh, this is a uh, almost an in-kind re reproduction of what's been previously there with the improved uh, height elevation. And we can't really worry too much about 50 years. We'd like to, but it's unpredictable. So I'm kind of satisfied with the, uh, the height that restrictions that are imp imposed at this point. And uh, as far as it goes with Steve, uh, you know, I don't know the story about this one attorney but we should respect an attorney or, or a client's uh, request, but uh, it's not a big deal to me on that point. That's it, thank you. Thanks, Gene. All right, any other members? All right, if not, I don't see no hands there. What I'll do is um, we'll open the public hearing and uh, like Steve had said in the beginning, you know, we're gonna limit it to three minutes and I'll recognize you and then once I recognize, raise your hand, uh, Steve will unmute you. So at this time, I'll uh, open the public hearing. So if you could raise your hand in the little cube, I'll see if I can find whoever's uh, going. Go ahead. Nah, George, I meant the, the do the, re the regular raise hand. Can you raise the hand over on the right side of the option? So there you are, George, go ahead. I don't think I have a button for it. Um, no, that's all right, go ahead, George, I see you. It might be under more, but I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, to the right. It looks good. Um, I would be in favor of continuing the public hearing. You know, the, the planning board, as you know, has not met for, uh, I think it's been four meetings now, four months. It's been quite a while. Um, and that's an excessive amount of time, you know, delay in between the last meeting. Uh, and, and really this meeting notice uh, with the agenda was only published two, two days ago. Um, I had spoken to Alec 
um, Alex also earlier today, uh, the attorney that was mentioned earlier, and he did have some comments specifically about ONR and some other issues regarding the site plan, not just the welfare of the residents, which is uh, one of the major issues for him, as it is for us. Um, so I think in consideration of the fact that um, these meetings haven't happened in four months, that we were only given uh, literally two days notice uh, that this meeting was going to happen, uh, happen on Zoom, uh, other people make plans. Um, and it's uh, reasonable to assume that not only couldn't he make this meeting, but that members of the public, I don't even know how many people we have on this call. I tried to do the best I can to let people know about this meeting tonight, but you know, people do have plans and with only two days notice, it was really not sufficient in my view to, um, to, to end a public hearing tonight. I think there should have been some more advance notice. Um, my comments, as you know, have been uh, already on the record. Uh, I feel this, uh, this development is uh, excessively dense uh, with the number of units. Uh, I know you had to meet certain uh, road requirement widths and setback requirements that were different from the original uh, development and as a result of uh, the roads having to be improved, which they were improved, uh, the units are closer together in, in the case of I think at least 30 units as close was only having five feet of side yard. Uh, that to me is not only uh, a bad idea, but it's dangerous in my view if God forbid we had a, a fire or some other kind of major catastrophe down there, flood or whatever. Uh, five feet of side yard, I guess on two different units would be 10 feet of side yard between the two that doesn't seem like an awful lot of space. So I think what you're doing is you're cramming in um, uh, with 250 variances that were granted by the zoning board, which didn't have any ability to make any changes to those variances. Uh, I think you're cramming in too many units. It's too high, dense, uh, too high density for this, for this uh, location. And we will have additional flooding. It's gonna definitely happen. So we have to consider that to be a, a definite possibility. So uh, in summary, I guess I would suggest and, and, and ask that the board does continue the public hearing and uh, gives the public a chance to have additional notice prior to closing it, even though you feel you're at the end of the process right now. I think that's the right thing to do uh, during these times. This is a new, a new thing, <laughs> these meetings. And I'm not even sure everybody has access to these um, Zoom meetings, but at least to give them enough notice so they can uh, try to connect. I appreciate right. that. Thank you, George. Does anyone else um, have any comments at this time? Because I'm not seeing any hands yet. How many members of the public do we I, have? I raised my hand. Where are you? I didn't even see. I'm, Who's I'm that? I'm Jackie Drexler. And I, oh, I go ahead, Jackie. Raised... Sorry about that. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm not on video. I'm just, well, I oh. can see you. Yes. So um, I guess thank you for this opportunity. However, it was such short notice. I actually canceled another uh, Zoom meeting that I was supposed to be on in order to be on this. And um, I believe that it is terribly short notice. Um, not everyone has the luxury to cancel a meeting, um, which I had. So I only heard about it through George Patanovic. Oh, my hand. Hello? Hello? Go ahead, we Am hear you. Okay. Keep going. And yeah, so, keep going. Okay. So um, I just feel it is short notice. This should be uh, put over onto the next meeting. Um, and I also do believe, obviously, um, I know uh, the other attorney, Ira, has his opinion on people being able to make these meetings, but with such short notice, I, you know, um, I really think that we should respect that Mr. Uh, that Alex would like to come speak before the board and he has I think he has in the past I still feel that the project um, you know just kind of piggybacking on George that the side yard issue is a real issue we have a serious problem with um, emergency vehicles if there were a fire if there were something there's just a uh, it's just too close and um, so I I think there's still issues that somehow need to get resolved. Um, so my three things are these issues on health and safety need to get resolved. Mr. Bernstein should have uh, the right to come before the board. And um, I, I'd really appreciate it uh, having more notice because um, actually with people going to Zoom meetings, there's so many more things that you can go to and sign up for and say you'll be a speaker at. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, this wasn't, this wasn't enough notice for me. So let's try to work on that for the next time. All right, thank you, uh, Jackie. Okay, um, thank you. Tom? 
Susan, you work, go ahead, Susan. I'm you, sorry, Susan Filgaris, 87 Mile Farm Road. I can't figure out how to raise my hand. I apologize to all of you. That's all right. Tom, thank you for doing this. I haven't attended, well, anyway, we have the length of time. I went to the planning board site hoping to see the permits, the background of this application, and basically what I have are the plats. If you look at Eagle Bay, you've posted the FEIS, the DIS, and several other documents. Why aren't the Baymore documents posted on the planning board site? I could have like read up on it and, and at least had a few more comments to offer. I will tell you, I guess I'm going to have to foil the DEC permit. Right because I would definitely like to read this. This is still the 100 year floodplain, am I correct? Am I right or wrong? Is it still zoned as the 100 year floodplain? Um, Bill, I Bill, I think Bill can answer. Well, I don't think that's really a time for answer. Just oh, not for answer. Statement, sorry, then we'll, we'll address yeah. it later. We'll address it after okay. after your okay. time. Sorry. I'm sorry, Tom. Uh, that's all right. At least if the documents were there, I could have read and not asked a foolish question or wasted the time. I feel the public hearing needs to remain open. I would like to see the DEC permit. I would like to see Orange and Rockland approve what has been suggested and what will be built prior to any approval. Only because health, safety, welfare of the people that would purchase those units. And I have, I have an ethical problem with simply posting a sign saying the road may flood. Remember, I'm one of the town residents that spent an enormous amount of money on a flooding issue by a builder who blithely walked away. I think the people that buy down there deserve to know that they're built in a floodplain. Thank you, and thank you for doing this, and I hope all of you are healthy and safe. Oh, thank you, Susan. Um, anyone, I can't, um, Steve, can you see any other people's raising hands? I can't see anything at this no, moment. No, there, there are, as far as I can see, let me just do a quick check. I think there are no other hands raised, so. Um, all right, I think, that's it. I think, Max, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to, to point out that if you go to the bottom of the screen and you, you click on participants, you will see a list of everybody who's participating. Oh, thank you. And raise hand. And raise hand is a button at the bottom of that list. Thank you. Oh, You're thank you, Max. You're All right. Um, I think I think at this point, because of our with you know with the circumstances going on and everything with with the COVID that. I'd like to continue the public hearing to next month. I know Ira, Can I respond no, Ira, hold on, Ira, hold on. I know you're not in favor, but there's a lot going on with our, with the staff, with the getting documents together. So I think another month isn't going to do us any harm. Well, Mr. Chairman, if, if I, if, if I can, uh, that, this, this site plan, for, for, this site plan has barely changed in a, in over a year. Right. Okay, all we've been working on in all that time are details, moving it maybe a foot here or a foot there, details uh, in order to, to get this thing done. The basic site plan has been, a, has been unchanged since the beginning. And the reason why it's unchanged since the beginning is, beca is because we started the process out before we ever got to you. Right. We're sitting down with your fire inspector and your building inspector and said, let's make this project as safe as we can. Quite frankly, I resent the fact that people are still talking, members of the public are still saying, well, we're concerned about the health and safety of the residents, okay? It's been vetted by your building inspector, by your fire inspector, by your town engineer, by the members of the board, okay? We have, uh, by the DEC, okay? Everybody who actually knows the technical aspects of this thing has said, we're good that they have no issues with it, that this is a significant improvement over what's going on. And the mere fact that somebody uh, from the public says, well, I'm worried about health and safety, you know, as if we aren't, as if the applicant isn't, don't forget, this applicant is going to be continuing to own it and continue to manage 
Okay, and if nothing else, if you if you if you attribute nothing else to its motives, it's got a profit motive to make sure that this place is safe so that it doesn't get hit with all sorts of viability claims. Uh, there is there is absolutely nothing that has been said and uh, in, in months with respect to the layout, other than we're concerned about this, we're concerned about that. There may be the, you know there's there's sea level rise. Uh, you know maybe in 50 years there might be some problems. Okay. This is as good as it's gonna get, okay? Uh, and I don't think that there's really anything that we're gonna hear in the next month, okay? That's going to be any different from what we have been hearing for the past year, okay? Now, I really don't think it's appropriate uh, to, to uh, continue this public hearing. There is no reason to continue this public hearing. There is no new information that this board is going to get from continuing the public hearing. And I think it's time that we moved on so that we can get this project going so that uh, the 130 uh, some families that are going to be moving in can move in a little bit faster so that we can give some closure there so that we can get this project going. All right, all right, Mr. Emanuel. But, uh, you know, I, I understand. But just so you, you know, like with the planning board, you know, I'm here for the residents, not the applicants. And I know we we haven't met since February. So if there's some residents that need to speak, you know, I'd rather hear them now and give them that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Gene, well, well, um, you know, Mr. Chairman, again, okay, you've had public hearings for over a year. We've barely had any changes. You haven't heard anything new tonight, okay, except from the applicant who continues to provide additional information as requested by the board. We have given the board every single document that it has, that it has requested, every single document that it and its consultants need, okay. There have been no changes to this plan other than the most minor changes. And simply because somebody says, yeah, well, maybe, you know, you know, we, we, you know maybe we'll have something different to say in, all, in, in, all, in uh, July, uh, again, for a year, there have been no su substantive comments with respect to this plan. Uh, and the, the complaint that maybe it's too dense, which is the only substantive comment that I heard from Mr. Mr. Patanovic, quite frankly, we're below the density that is allowed under your code. And we've gotten the variances that were, uh, that were needed. Uh, the, uh, the ZBA granted those variances, by the way, after a public hearing that was well attended. Uh, so that issue should be, should be finished. It's over. There's nothing more to talk about. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll go to the board. Uh, Gene, would you have any comments? No, I can understand where Mr. Emanuel is coming from. Uh, what concerns me is we don't have the final uh, mm -hmm. clearance of Orange and Rockland. Uh, other than that, I really don't have an issue. It, it's been a couple of years. Uh, I can understand their frustration to move forward but I'd like to see all the T's dotted, you know, all the I's dotted and the T's crossed. Mm -hmm. Kind of mixed on this one. Mr. Kreis, we have the approval from Orange and Rockland. They want okay. confirmation of one dimension, no. which, we can which we can provide for them. That's it. So we have the approval from Orange and Rockland. All right, thank you. I'm, again, I'm not really against closing it personally. I mean, we... We did beat this to death. I mean, you're not, getting, right. a final, you're not getting a final resolution right now. It's just a matter right. of right. They're not getting anything final. I say pull the board, uh, Tom, see what they say. All right. Um, for the board members. Um, Tom, I believe we have some people um, have their hands raised. Uh, Tom, okay. I believe we have some people have their hands raised. Uh, All right. Um, all right. Um, which I don't see. Uh, I have. Uh, which I don't see. Mr. I, Wilson. I have, uh, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, I wanted to uh, address. Yeah, I wanted to Chairman Gubatos's uh, comment regarding Chairman Gubatos's his comment responsibility to the residents. His we have agreements in place to Someone move. We have radio. agreements in place to Someone move. Has the radio. We have agreements in place to move. Uh, we have agreements in place. The majority move, of the residents. Um, so in delaying the majority our of the residents. So wait, can you, can, you hold, can you guys hold on a second? Wait, can, can everyone? Can you guys? Can everyone on a mute their mics? Can everyone, Susan. Can everyone mute their mics, Susan? All right, now try it. Sorry. As I was saying, 
Yeah, better. We have agreements in place with the tenants that are currently there. And in delaying our approvals, you are delaying them from being able to move out of the community. So while your responsibility is to the residents of Stony Point, you are also holding up the people that are currently living in the community that we are ready to move out. And what was, where, what was, I didn't get catch the first part. Um, what, are you part of the community? I didn't hear where. Uh, I'm with RHP Properties, ownership of Baymar. Okay. So you've got, you've got agreements with a lot of the tenants. That's correct. And we are waiting on approvals to begin the move out process. All right. All right, let me go to the board. Um, Steve. Tom, um, excuse me, Tom, this is Joel Brown. Hey, Joel. Hi, how are you? Colby works, works with us as well. And I, I'd just like to add what, what Colby's referencing is that uh, the, the board instructed us to work with the residents and we've done so diligently. We've also were instructed to work with Mr. Burstein and his clients he neglected to contact us for months, and that's why there's a delay with his clients. Okay. So what, what Colby Wilson is referencing is the fact that we've made agreements with the remaining residents to move, and we can't do so until we get the approvals to do so, right? So uh, that's why this, the, the timing of the approval is so important to us. And I, I just like to add further is that I, uh, I don't feel that I feel the need to mention it, but I think most of you know that we've been we've gone over and beyond the call of duty to meet with everyone from the, the town, the building department, individual board members, and we feel that we've made every attempt for the last two years to try to comply with all of the requests to be done. And at all this right. point, that the timing is going to negatively impact those remaining residents that are there. All right, I think, so we go back is the, the happen, Ira, the happiness letter from ONR, we have that? You have a series of emails that have narrowed things down and we've the last email that we have uh, and that was sent over to the, uh, to the board was dated June 24th, so that's uh, yesterday, I guess. Um, basically, and uh, it says, uh, it was an email from uh, Jim Hetty to, uh, to Kennedy Gennaro uh, which says, I've reviewed your responses to the latest comments uh, and note that my latest comments have been addressed. In general, we find the proposed project and associated work within the Orange and Rockland easement acceptable. However, we still need to conduct a clearance assessment to ensure that our facilities will remain in compliance with the applicable codes of company standards and therefore still subject to Orange and Rockland issuing a formal consent letter prior to construction beginning within our easement. Okay. Uh, so this is the type of thing that could easily be done post uh, post final, just like other permits that are uh, sought uh, and obtained post final. I got gotcha. you, um, Steve. I got to ask you a quick question. Um, if can, would we be able to close the public hearing but keep the written comments open till Monday so that? Uh, the attorney can send us stuff because it'll be it's it's sim it's probably we'll get it more precise if he if he sends us the comments. Yes, that option is open to the board if you wish to close the uh, the public right. hearing, but leave open the hearing for submission of uh, any submissions. Uh, I, I might suggest a few more days than just uh, right. uh, what do you two think? business days, but um, whatever the board decides. All right. So if we if I we could close the public hearing and keep the and the written comments open till the end of next week. Sure, well, Mr. Chairman. We, we really do think that the, the time has come for the for the board to, to make a decision, and we, and we believe that an approval should be granted. And we think you're ready now. I don't, I don't think we're making a decision tonight, Ira. May I we ask why? We just got back into uh, into a session, and we have a lot of things just to make sure that you know our T's are 
crossed our eyes a dot. We just, we, this is our first Zoom meeting back. Well, I guess, as I said, we've been working with, you know, just despite the fact that the board hasn't been, hasn't been meeting, we have been working with your consultants and your consultants have all, have all given the clearance and all, have all given the go ahead. We think that if, if this was the type of th type of uh, application that perhaps you've only seen once or twice before, I might understand more readily uh, your, your, your concern that you've only gotten to it. Uh, but you've been dealing with this for well over a year, perhaps two years. Uh, the board is extremely familiar with this project. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, Okay. I, I would just like to um, say the applicant makes a compelling, a compelling um, argument. And I do feel that um, we've gone the extra length as far as public hearings are concerned. I think we've taken in everybody possible. This uh, Mr. Dershowitz has not been able to attend for whatever reasons he's had. Um, but I think in fairness, if we leave it open to him to put these comments in writing, that we close the public hearing and move ahead to see what conditional things we can put in place before we give a final approval. That's my opinion. Thank you. All right, thank you, Chair. Uh, um, Bill, what, what's our options? I don't know what kind of approvals I were looking for. Is it site plan? Well, what the applicant is looking for, approval for the site plan that was submitted. Um, I don't have an objection myself uh, closing the public hearing because I don't believe you're going to get any new information that hasn't been submitted over the last year or so. Right. Um, you know, I think they're pretty well where they're going to be. I don't see any, uh, you know, we can talk all we want about the spacing of the units and things like that. That's been gone over. We had, we have eliminated some of the units. They got their variances. So that's kind of a moot um, um, question. So I really don't know what would be new, you know, new information. I did read the email from O and R and I do agree with Ira that, um, between the, you know, the, the virus and um, the clearance issue, all in all, wanted to wait till the weather was warm enough to actually get a good reading on the uh, on the sag of the lines, which you know the last week, this week would have been a good time to uh, measure that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think we're pretty much there, or are there? All right. So. Um for the board, so if we we could close the public hearing, keep the he can do the written comments, but would we just have to do uh, approval of a site plan, the, the current site plan before us? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. The only application before you is is the site plan application. We don't need a special permit. We don't need any other uh, permits. Uh, there is a coastal consistency determination that needs to be made, but I understand that that would be part of the site plan approval resolution. All right. Steve, what, 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 what else would we have to do tonight? Uh, nothing more tonight other than make your decision with respect to either um, closing the public hearing or keeping it open, setting this matter down for the next uh, planning board meeting. Um, to either continue the meeting or to um, uh, vote on the resolution. There's no resolution now. I have to draft the resolution for you. Uh -huh. All right. So right now, um, for the board, I'll ask if, if we want a motion to close the public hearing. So I'll just send that out to the board. And, um, so I'll just send that out to the board. And, um, who's? Oh, there. Who's, go ahead. Sorry. I'll make that motion. Oh, there. Go ahead. Sorry. All right. Carrie made a motion to, uh, we'll close right. the public Carrie hearing. Carrie made a motion to, uh, we'll close the public hearing. I'll second that with the condition that we I'll allow. I'll second that with the condition that we allow. Mr. Dershowitz to 
provide his comment. Mr. Dershowitz to Sorry, Mr. provide his comment. Sorry, not right. Dershowitz. All right, Mr. You know what I mean. Sorry, all right. Dershowitz, you know all what right. I mean. Yes. I, all right. I, yes. I, Wait, I just need everyone to mute their, their uh, yeah, there it is. Jerry, just mute yourself so I don't bounce back. All right, so I have a motion to close the public. Second from Jerry. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. You can't hear me? I, I um, can you repeat you that, said. please? Um, can you repeat that, yeah. please? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now, Tom. All right, I have a, a motion uh, to close the public hearing with the um, contingency to accept the written comments from the attorney by the end of next week. And I had a motion from Carrie and a second by Jerry to close the public hearing and just keep, uh, get the attorney's comments, the written comments by next week. Uh, Mr. Chairman, are you going to just, are you keeping it open for general, anyone from the public to submit? I'll keep comments? it, yes, we'll keep it open for, like he wanted Eric, but I will keep it open for the public up until the end of next week. Okay. So I have the, the, the motion to close the public hearing, but keep the written comments open till the end of next week. I have a motion and a second, and I'll just poll the board. Um, Mr. Crace. Yes. 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 Mr. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Alessi. Was that a yes? You were on mute. mute. Yes, yeah. she yeah. said yes. yes. All right. Jerry? Yes, she yes. said yes. All right. Jerry? All right, yes. Jerry, yes. 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 And I and I may, and I say yes too. So we'll um, close the public hearing and we'll keep the comments, the written comments open to let me see, what's the, end, what's the uh, date for the end of next week? Tom, I think you might have missed somebody. Oh, Eric, I'm sorry, duh, Eric. <laughs> and the date is yes. 26th. Yes, the uh, but we'll keep, we're closing the public here, but keeping the comments open till, um, for the yeah. public July 3rd. Mr. Chairman, July 3rd is a, is a holiday. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, so why don't we do, why don't we do it to the second? All right, okay. we'll do it to the second, to July second, for the written. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Mayor. You're welcome, Eric. How did you vote? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, and how did you vote, Tom? I voted yes. Okay. Thanks, Mayor. Now, um, for the site plan, are we waiting for next month, Steve? Yeah. Yes. I have no resolution for you tonight. All right. So, Ira, we're going to wait. We have to wait till next month to do the site plan. I'm sorry. Uh, we're disappointed. Well, it's it's tough times, and you know, I you you know, I hope everyone just you know takes that into consideration. There's a lot going on. You know. A lot of people have been impacted by this. So, you know, I think a little patience and, you know, enduring these times would help. You know, we're all disappointed, but we just got, we got to keep moving on. Mr. Chairman, I'm, cer I'm certainly sympathetic to what's going on. We're, st we're still disappointed. Thank you. All right. You could be, thank you, Ira. You could be disappointed. We'll see you next month. Okay. All right. Next item on the agenda is um, Eagle Bay. And it, uh, this is just a review, Mr. Ziegler. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Well, it's good to see you. <laughs> uh, we went to a planning board meeting on March, and at that time we were waiting for some comments back from uh, the EIS, which we had circulated internally for uh, a review. And then the world ended. So uh, during that time, uh, as this project seemed to be sitting still, we had moved forward. And we moved forward with uh, sewer, water, with CSX, and, and we had some uh, ARB things that we had to do. We still have to go back to them. 
And then uh, we really hadn't received any comments back from the planning board. So just recently we got comments from the planning board. So what we would like to do, uh, it's wonderful to have a Zoom meeting and it's really cool. I got a picture back here you can see. I feel like the weatherman. Um, and the clouds are coming in like this. But uh, what we'd like to do is, uh, I guess we'll be able to open up and have get to a workshop next month and go over these list of questions where uh, there could be, you know, what we have some conflict with and uh, show you what we did with the sewer. So uh, John has helped us with the, with the sewer. We did some monitoring of special, uh, uh, special areas where we had picked uh, from the Stony Point uh, sewer report, which uh, Lincoln Tully built. Uh, we went to Suez, we have a Suez plan uh, they've given us a willingness to serve, and uh, they also uh, basically give us engineering uh, areas that we have to design and upgrade water line. Uh, we've had multiple conversations with, uh, by email with uh, CSX, and um, we actually have, a quote, an email approval for sure, uh, and we have a email approval for water but it has to be a permit uh, filed by Suez and we're still dealing with uh, the road lowering the road about a foot. Uh, unfortunately last week uh, CSX laid off uh, 85 of their people in the office so it's, oh, wow. it's, it's a little bit tough all over but uh, we're, we're moving forward. So what we'd like to do is just uh, sit down and pull out our maps and pull out these areas of concern and I, I thank the members for their comments and uh, start going over this thing uh, and get it back on track. It, it, it's gotten stale. So uh, between the EIS delivery and the review and then, you know, the last two months, uh, we just want to crank it up and get back in and bother you until we get to the end. Okay. Um, Max, any comments yet on this or you want to? Yeah, so, um... We and, and all the other consultants, um, you know, and John have provided our written comments uh, to the board on the FEIS. Um, I, I think a lot of them were about technical details and making sure that, that responses were uh, suitable and reflected the perspective of the planning board. There were a few items, uh, substantive, that I do think require uh, deliberation by the board in an open session, and I agree with Dave. It's, it's, we've gotten to a point now where I think the planning board needs to talk about the issues um, that are uh, really, I, I think, at points of disagreement between perhaps your consultants and, and them, and, and maybe there's some differences of opinion. And I think the planning board needs to weigh in and provide them guidance uh, so that they know uh, which way to move. The FEIS, unlike the DEIS, uh, is the planning board's document. So the DEIS reflected the applicant's you know, analysis and, and opinion and, and, uh, and take on the uh, potential impacts and how to mitigate them. The FEIS needs to be the planning board's take. So they need your input on this. So I really do agree with Dave that a working meeting uh, where we talk about the planning board's concerns, where we go over any of the concerns of the consultants that there, there may not be consensus between the parties uh, is in order at this point. All right, thank you, Max. Um, Bill, any comments now? I lost him. Oh, there he is. <clears throat> no, I'm here. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the only way to go was with the workshop, a live workshop, because All right. We're at that point where, you know, I do have some questions on both Max's end and also uh, the applicants on some of the uh, questions and so forth, but we need to do that at a workshop. All right. Thanks, Bill. Which, I believe, which I believe we're going to set up for the ninth, I believe. Yes. Thanks, jo Thanks Bill. John, yeah. anything? Yeah, no, I'd, I'd be in agreement with both Bill and Max. We did have some TAC meetings and there are some, uh, again, direction from the board, so I think it would be very helpful. All right, thank you, John. Um, to, 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 who else? Steve, any comments yet on this, or are you good? 
Uh, no comments. All right. Um, and like we, you, what we'd like to resume is, you know, every month we always have TAC meetings where we have the consultants and only three planning board members, and we meet with each applicant just to review documents. So we're going to try to continue that next month in July, that if for, we could continue our TAC meetings in person. And I think July 9th was the way, it's always like the second uh, Thursday of the month. So hopefully, you know, if we can get all the logistics, all the uh, things right, we'll, we'll continue our workshops. It's just like we usually do, it's just three planning board members. We don't have everyone, we just have the consultants and the applicants. So Dave, we'll see if we can get that together and just, you know, continue the way we've been doing our TAC meetings. Perfect, it's good for us. All right, anything else are you good for now? I'm perfect. All right. We're ready to go. All right. Um, 